Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. By golly, we've got a lot of stuff to get through today. I want to begin with a benchmark for the Ryzen 5 7600X. I'm only going to spend a few moments discussing this. For one, because it's on the user benchmark database. And two, there are some questions regarding the validity. As for why there's questions of the validity, well, you can see the name yourself. Now, it's very possible that this has been altered by user benchmark. We know that they're not exactly super duper friendly to AMD, or it's possible that it's a troll entry or whatever. Again, I'm not going to spend too long on this. I'm just going to mention it just for completeness sake. But yes, as you probably have guessed, the 7600X is going to be the successor to the current 5600X. The bottom line is this is based on the Zen 4 microprocessor architecture. And if it is real, then the results are pretty impressive. So basically, in terms of uh, single core performance, then it seems to beat the 5600X by around 56% and around 50% in quad core. And this also means that in, against a 12900K in single core, well, it's considerably faster, about 20%, depending obviously on system configuration. Again, I'm not going to spend too long on this benchmark because user benchmark is kind of a meme at this point. Plus, also, there's some questions regarding the validity of the benchmark. I'm going to be doing a little bit of skipping around because we're going to be going back to AMD in just a second to discuss GPU news. But I do also want to discuss Intel just for a moment because there are further benchmarks for the 13600 and 13700K. Now, these are pre production results and they have been uh, conducted with, uh, sorry, by Extreme Player. I would also like to give credit to Harakazi5719 on Twitter. I follow them myself and they do a pretty good job often of like compiling all the benchmarks. And I'm not going to say too much about the results here because I think they pretty much speak for themselves across multiple games. And I am happy that we actually now have some game benchmarks. Basically speaking, against their predecessors, the performance is better. Um, depending obviously on the resolution and testing setup, that's going to make a lot of difference here. But ultimately at 1080p, we're looking at around a 7 to 10% improvement in performance. On the other hand, minimum results are much better. So we're looking at up to 14%. Obviously, there's a lot of discussion of whether this is a worthwhile upgrade, at least to gamers. Personally speaking, this is my personal opinion based upon these pre-production samples and things I've heard. I think that if you have something like a 5800X3D from AMD or, you know, like a 12700K or something like that, and gaming is your primary focus, most people will probably want to skip over this generation of CPUs. Instead, put as much cash as you possibly can on the next generation GPUs. But obviously, if you're doing other stuff, quote unquote, or you're coming from an older system, let's say for sake of argument, like an 8700K, then you are in a very different situation. But speaking of very different situations, by golly gosh, there is a lot of news actually concerning GPUs. I want to quickly go over a pretty interesting uh, tweet from copt 7 Kimmy, And this basically is times by extreme scores of both the RTX 4080 as well as the 4070. Now, they have stated that these are actually results from basically test boards. So, obviously, there are a few caveats here. The first of which is that these scores can change with improvements, improvements excuse me, in drivers. And these are also only times by extreme scores. Now, you may ask yourself, and this is a question I get quite a lot, so I'm just going to tackle it here just real quick. Why is it that we're seeing... I know, times by extreme scores all of the time, or some random ass 3D mark score. And just for the sake of argument, in these results, you don't see Doom Eternal or something like that, you know? Because it's not like these are public benchmarks. These are things that people have leaked. So why is that? Why are people not leaking something like Doom Eternal with all of the settings on? What frame rate? Now, obviously, recently we did get a um, uh, result for control, but very typically, we don't get that. Instead, um, it's, well, as I said, times by extreme. And the main reason behind this, honestly, uh, is basically drivers are heavily locked down, uh, both internally as well as particularly externally for when IIBs get it. Basically speaking, um, the drivers will be sent, and this is very simplified, but basically the drivers, um, when they're being, sorry, when the hardware is being tested, they will be locked down to the extreme. 
So for example, if the driver simply does not recognize a piece of software, um, just to say for the sake of argument, they authorize times by extreme and whatever other benchmarks is to say, you know, the popular two or three or four or whatever. And then you try to launch something else that is not recognized by those drivers. It will just be like, ah, uh -uh, ain't gonna work and crash. Again, I am simplifying things a lot here, but that's essentially what happens. Um, and that's why, obviously, the, one of the reasons they do this is to help minimize the leaks and also to try and control the flow of information. Either way, let's get on to the results, shall we? So the 4080 in times by extreme is around 15,000. That's actually slightly over that. And meanwhile, the RTX 4070 is scoring around 10,000. So how does this compare? Well, essentially speaking, the 4070 is going to be about as fast as a 40, sorry, as a 3090. I'll repeat that. The 4070 is going to be competing with a 3090. Meanwhile, the 4080 is going to double the performance of a 3080. Now, another way you can look at this, and obviously we're going to have to wait until the final benchmarks are available, reviewers have hardware, but you can basically say that this is like the 10th generation, you know, GeForce cards again. Do you remember when uh, Pascal launched, um, you know, we went from Maxwell to Pascal? And basically speaking, it was double the performance of like the 980 to the 1080. It's kind of like this again. Obviously, with Pascal, there were a lot of things that went right, such as a new node. They had new memory technology. They had a major improvement in architecture. You know, clock frequencies went up. Blah, 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 blah. But ultimately speaking, um, this could be a Pascal moment, albeit with much higher power consumption figures. And now finally, I just want to mention something regarding the RX 7000 series from AMD. Essentially speaking, Grayman has confirmed that the 7900 series is going to be using 20 GBPS memory, and most likely is going to be targeting, guess what? Yeah, you guessed it, a November release date. Now, I have mentioned November a couple of times myself for the release date. Basically, it seems to be, you know, one and a half to two months, depending on the on timings, behind that of the Ryzen 7000 processors. So, ultimately speaking, um, it seems that Narve 31 is going to launch after NVIDIA's RTX 4090. There is still a crap ton of confusion regarding the release schedule. And it's one of the reasons that I've been putting off one of my videos that I've been mentioning a couple of times I want to work on, because I keep getting told different information. One um, one basically set of claims is that the 31, Navi 31, excuse me, launches first and then 33 launches late this year. But the thing is, at this rate, either Navi 33 launches in like December, which is very unlikely, or a couple of weeks after 31, or it's the same time if it is this year, or it's been delayed and launches next year. And a group of people are telling me that there are delays. And as for the NVIDIA side of things, well, things get even more confusing because there are some reports that the 4090 launches by its lonesome and others, including what I'm hearing, that no, NVIDIA will launch the 4090 first, but they will also launch later on the 4080 and 4070 this year. I honestly do not know which is true. It's very possible that this has just not been decided internally at NVIDIA. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. I do have a couple of other updates um, regarding Navi 31 and so on, but this video has already gone kind of long. Um, so I'm probably going to put that in a video tomorrow because uh, I need to do a little bit of uh, due diligence just to check that some of the specifications I've been given. Apparently, there have been a couple of changes to the specifications which I leaked just a while ago. Basically, a couple of the specs, most of them are right, but a couple of the SKUs had slightly incorrect specifications. So I will put out a you know small correction on that. Also, on small corrections, there's a very interesting thing from Raja Kodori. Raja Kodori is stating the ARC roadmap is not changed. And if you missed it, myself, I put out a video initially that I'd been hearing that ARC, for the HPG anyway, had either significant changes or possibly would be cancelled, but servers and iGPUs would continue. And others basically then started to release videos. I, I believe it was Cortex, for example. I think he released a video on this. Um, I don't, I, I've just been really crazy busy the last couple of days, so I haven't checked out his video. So I don't know exactly what he said. 
but a couple other people DM'd me and told me that's what Cortex said. So if I'm misquoting, I, I'm, I apologize. I don't know what he exactly said in this video. I have not had time to watch it, but I was told that Cortex mentioned the same thing. But Raja is saying that no, there are no changes internally. Now, I don't know what the answer is. As I said in my video, I'm hoping that the information I received was wrong. However, multiple people did tell me that it was true. However, it was being discussed internally. So maybe they did. So the possibilities are this, and I'm saying this from the perspective of I do not know which is true. I, at the moment, am believing Raja that the HPG is going to continue because that's what Intel have stated publicly. But it's possible that one of three things has happened. One, my information is bad. That happens. Hold, hand my ha hold my hand up. God, I can't speak. That's fine. If I take if I take an L, that's absolutely fine. Another possibility is that my information was right. They did consider it internally, but they decided not to do it either because of bad PR or just because in the longer term they feel that they can bring it back. You know what, my personal opinion, regardless of the performance of the cards, they do not need a card which is as fast as Nvidia or AMD's greatest. It does not have to be that damn fast. All I care about is a card. You know what, if Battle Mage only ends up being as fast as, let's say Nvidia's mid-range, but at a competitive price point, XCSS works well, you get the idea. I'm good with that, honestly. I am absolutely okay with that. Um, I think that that would be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Intel can continue to push XCSS, which I'm a big proponent of, and I am absolutely okay with that. So that's another possibility. Um, we'll see. Ultimately, I hope Intel do continue um, ARC because, you know, I was pretty much involved in this initially when they did, you know, I was kind of hearing that Intel were going to launch discrete graphics and I was pushing a lot of the rumors and early and then obviously i got invited to gdc um which seems oh so long ago now and i actually you know met a lot of intel employees and this is not me playing favorites i'm just saying um i think competition is always a good thing and you know what um as a reviewer i am in a very privileged position i certainly do not get as much hardware as for example i don't know um linus tech tips However, I do get crap sent to me for free, and therefore I'm in a very privileged position, and I don't have to deal with a lot of the issues you guys do. But even so, I was still getting screwed over as well trying to get hardware, believe it or not. Like, there were several reviews that I wanted to do and some tests, but I just couldn't get the cards. I know, QQ, woe is me. But ultimately, what I'm saying is that, you know, it was a crap situation. And so another player involved in the industry in the long term, I know there's the whole thing with TSMC, which is outside the topic of this video, but outside of that, if we can get a player in the industry and they can make compelling, decent products, even if it's only low to mid range, I'm 100% on board, sign me up, great. With that said, um, I've rambled way too long, which is ironic considering I just mentioned this video is already getting too long. I'm gonna let you guys go. Have a great day, bye for now.